The first sub-step of step three is to select a list of disciplines that are potentially relevant to the problem. It's important to consider as many disciplines as possible in this initial sub-step. We can confirm the relevance of these disciplines later. So what is a potentially relevant discipline? It's one whose research domain includes at least one phenomenon involved in the problem. Complex problems usually involve multiple phenomena. If a discipline examines at least one of these phenomena, it's relevant to the whole problem. Compared to some of the other tasks involved in the IRP, this one is relatively straightforward. At this point, we are not concerned with whether the discipline has actually contributed significant insights. We can confirm that later. For now, we want to try to identify as many disciplines as possible. After all, interdisciplinarians seek comprehensive understanding of the problems they examine. To do this, we are going to focus on both the phenomena of interest as well as the perspectives of the many disciplines that are relevant to the problem. To help you identify potentially relevant disciplines, start by focusing on the phenomena that are relevant to your problem. We want to first focus on the phenomena and then try to link that phenomena to disciplines. Use tables 2.3 and 2.4 from chapter two to see what disciplines focus on what phenomena. Table 2.4 lists several categories of phenomena, including genetic predisposition, individual differences, economy, art, politics, culture, social structure, technology and science, health, population, and non-human environment. Once you've identified the phenomena involved in the problem, use the table to help you categorize that phenomena. Then table 2.3 should help you tie the phenomena of interest of relevance to specific disciplines. In addition to phenomena, we can also consider disciplinary perspectives. Refer to table 2.2 in chapter two to see if the problem as a whole is studied by specific disciplines. Again, we will confirm whether the disciplines actually study the topic later. For now, we are trying to find all of the potentially relevant disciplines. We don't want to miss anything at this point. Once we've identified a comprehensive list, we can then skim the literature using Google Scholar or the university library's databases. We need to look to see if the discipline's experts have published material about the topic. We may want to jot down the sources that appear to make significant contributions to the topic, and we may want to make notes about which disciplines do not appear to study the topic. These notes will help us in the last sub-step of step three. This table, table 4.1 from the textbook, is an example of what we are trying to accomplish in this first sub-step. In the left column, we can see a list of disciplines that are thought to be related to the issue of human cloning. Biology, psychology, political science, philosophy, religious studies, law, bioethics. Then in the right column, we can see a brief explanation of how each discipline is related to the problem, how each discipline attempts to explain the problem its causes, its outcomes, prevention, treatment, and so on. In this example, we can see that psychologists might want to examine the psychological impact of being a cloned human. We can continue using a table like this one as we complete step three and the subsequent steps, updating it as we go.